Some of these shareholder meetings have already happened, and in Dublin, California, where the Ross Stores Company had its meeting, workers with the Garment Worker Center in Los Angeles arrived to challenge the company over its sweatshop conditions in which they produce clothes for Ross. I spoke with Mar Martinez of the Garment Worker Center about what went down at the meeting. We've been doing this campaign for three years to try to recover wages that garment workers earned while producing Ross. And so I went into the annual shareholder meeting uh, to ask Barbara Rantler and the rest of the shareholders uh, why they haven't met with workers to try to resolve this issue. Uh, why they And we're uh, specifically asking Ross to go ahead and take responsibility for the over 800000 that's owed to these workers after having produced Ross clothing. So I went into the shareholder meeting and immediately was treated very differently than any of their shareholders. They put me in a separate room, had security personnel um, escorting me around, making sure that I wasn't interacting with any of the other shareholders, didn't allow me to be in the whole meeting, only told me that I could make a comment for two minutes. But, you know, when I finally was able to go inside and make the comment, as soon as I started talking about the workers and the sweatshops and raw store supply chain, they took the mic away from me and uh, started trying to speak over me. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I had to raise my voice. And then they had security guards kind of uh, surrounding me so that nobody could see me. But it was uh, everybody was kind of staring wanting to hear what I had to say, but they didn't really allow me to to finish what my statement was going to be. Mm-hmm. But overall, I uh, made the point to shareholders that, you know, there, there are sweatshops in the supply chain and there is money owed to workers that produce to, uh, their clothing that haven't been able to recover their stolen wages. Yeah, so tell us about that money that's owed. What's the specifics of the wage theft that's going on there? We have four workers that uh, are owed over 800000 in stolen wages, and they were producing clothing for Ross at a factory here in L.A. called Sam's Fashion, mm-hmm. and the Department of Labor investigated this factory and, and 13 other factories that were producing Ross clothing, and all of them were, you know, terrible conditions, and workers were being paid an average of 4 or $5 an hour. Ooh because of the peace rates. And so, uh, you know, workers filed their claims, but the factories actually shut down. Um, The employers were disappeared. Even the manufacturer, who was the Ross manufacturer in Los Angeles for five years, they also shut down and didn't pay any money to workers. So, uh, you know, the Department of Labor report also showed that uh, it was the the amount that Ross was actually paying for these garments was just simply not enough Mm -hmm. to ensure the minimum wage to workers. So it's uh, how Ross is directly linked to this is that their demands for cheap clothing is what created uh, the sub-minimum wage for garment workers. Um, They they were consistently underfunding orders, uh, their contracts with uh, their contractors here in Los Angeles, uh, so that it's not even a possibility for workers to receive the minimum wage. So now that they are owed this money and all of this has been discovered, Ross is trying to say, oh, we have no control over the conditions in these contractor factories, but uh, absolutely the control comes from their demands uh, for you know clothing that is made really cheaply, mm-hmm. which is why workers are not you know, being insured basic labor rights. Talk a little bit more about the this sort of subcontracting. Our listeners are probably familiar with the way this works with garment factories overseas, but maybe not aware of how many of those are still happening right here in the U.S. Subcontracting is a tactic, I think, that a lot of com- corporations use to avoid liability, to pass on liability to, you know, different levels in their supply chain, uh, but and, and to kind of mask the role that these big corporations play in in the wages and conditions of workers at factories and where they're actually producing garments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what also tends to happen is that um, when there is wage theft, when these issues are discovered, when workers are raising their voices, the way that they get away with it is by shutting down, closing shop, uh, what we call cutting and running from the issue and leaving workers with no avenue to collect or resolve their issues 
they're, you know, knocking on doors of factories that are empty within like a week of an investigation, within a month of filing uh, their wage claim, um, they're knocking on doors that, you know, have no nobody be, uh, that's going to answer them because mm-hmm. they've gone into the habit of shutting down and disappearing and reopening somewhere, somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So that's really how subcontracting this work out it ensures that like the retailers will be protected from workers being coming and knocking at their doors. Yeah. So we've kind of defied that and said, no, we know who is directly responsible for these conditions. We know it's the retailers yeah. that are really responsible for for the conditions that we're seeing here in Los Angeles uh, garment shops. What are the next steps in this campaign and where can people find out more about it? We have a website under at garmentworkerscenter.org. You can go ahead and and look at the Ross Exploits page, which will give you all the details and how to sign our petition. Right now, we are asking folks to um, send letters to shareholders. We have a petition up, a letter petition, where you can write your own message and just click send after you put your you know email information it's a really quick and easy way to support us because right now we know that you know the issue has just really been between these workers and the executives at Ross and the lawyers at Ross but what we think is that if the shareholders really know what's going on if the people that are investing in Ross really know what's going on those are the people that those executives um, are going to listen to and we need to pressure them to go ahead and, and say this is an issue we need to resolve it Ross has a moral obligation uh, to resolve this issue with workers because uh, even if they can say that they didn't know or you know a million lies that I think that they're telling us about why they aren't responsible. Even if all of that is true, they still have a moral and ethical obligation just to these workers to resolve the issue and to recognize and try to eliminate sweatshops from their supply chain. That was Mar Martinez of the Garment Worker Center in Los Angeles.